So for my next printer build, I decided to print the parts out of carbon fiber nylon. Now for those unfamiliar nylons and many other filaments are hydroscopic. That means they absorb moisture from the air. Now with these plastics, you do want to keep them dry while in use. This prevents moisture buildup in the filament and potentially ruining your prints. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a quick and simple dry box so you can print these materials successfully. Now the dry box itself is constructed mostly of off the shelf components and some things you may already have around your house if you are involved in 3D printing. Now the box I am using is advertised as a field storage box. I purchased it from a local outdoor store and the reason I went with this box, it's heavy duty plastic construction and it does have a built in seal already. So when the box is closed, this should provide a relatively tight gasket. It is advertised as waterproof. Also, the reason I went with this box, it is large enough to hold a printed spool holder with my filament and also a large bag of desiccant. Now, turning this into a dry box is relatively simple. The first thing we're going to do is attach a Bowden fitting. Now, to do this, I simply drilled a hole in the front of the box. Now, if you have the bright taps on hand, you can drill this and tap this for the Bowden connector itself. I did not, so what I did was I drilled it slightly undersized, and then I used the Bowden connector to cut the threads into the plastic. Now, if you do want to make this permanent, you can seal this with some sort of sealant. This will kind of help a little bit with preventing air from getting into the box. Once we have the Bowden connector attached to the box, the next thing I did was print a spool holder. You can fabricate a spool holder in many different methods. I simply use a printed model. Saw that into your box. Again, this is why I went with a bigger one. Put the filament in, and then I added a bag of desiccant. This will help absorb any moisture that leaks into the box, especially since now that we put a hole in it, this will not be a 100% seal. Now for feeding the filament out, I do have a piece of Bowden tube leading out. Now I'm gonna be using two different types of Bowden tube here. The Bowden tube leading out of the box is your standard two millimeter ID, four millimeter OD Bowden tube that's common with 3D printers that feed 1.75 millimeter filament. You want to use this size because it has the smallest diameter possible that the filament fits through and you want to minimize air leakage into the box as much as possible. Now the next trick is you have a separate Bowden tube feed the filament into your printer itself. This is what's called a reverse Bowden setup. For this I use a 3mm ID Bowden tube. This does help a bit with additional moisture trying to get into the filament, especially if you decide to pause or there are some gaps between printing and the filament sitting out in the open. Also, with the 3mm ID, this helps a lot with preventing friction. With filaments such as CF nylon, they are abrasive and they do cause friction when going through a Bowden tube. So with going with a larger diameter Bowden tube on the inside, you're minimizing friction and you're reducing the amount of work your extruder has to do to pull the filament into the hot end. And with that all set up, you go ahead and seal everything up, run the filament to your hot end, and then you are good to print. Now I was lucky in this roll of filament came relatively dry out of the bag, so I didn't have to run it through a dehydrator before going into printing. And I have now been printing for several days. I haven't had any moisture issues at all. There's no bubbling. Everything's still coming out quite well out of the extruder. Now for this filament, this is CF nylon. This is Sane Smart CF nylon. And printing it on my printer was actually a relatively straightforward process. All I did was swap out the nozzle to a hardened nozzle. I am printing this at a 75 degree bed with 275 on the nozzle. A little bit of glue stick on the PEI to help with adhesion and to prevent it from bonding to the PEI itself. And so far, everything is printing quite well. So this is a quick rundown on how to build yourself a quick DIY dry box if you want to print other hydroscopic filaments yourself at home. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content such as this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you want to help support the things I do and the content I create, there is links in the description as well. 
I hope you learned something new today. And as always, have yourself a great day. Thank you.